The highest price filly of the week topped the final day of trade for book one of the Tattersall's October yearling sale, when a daughter of Frankel out of champion two-year-old filly Millal sold for 1.6 million guineas. The rare offering consigned by Watership Down Stud on behalf of breeder Francis Jennings attracted the interest of all the major buying powerhouses on the sales ground before being knocked down to Shaker Hisser's Shadwell Estate Company for the session topping price. She's a beautifully bred filly, obviously by one of the world's greatest stallions, out of a Cheveley Park winner, first foal, lovely quality filly, beautifully balanced. I saw her on the farm about three weeks ago and loved her there. And we've been back three times since and liked her every time here and Sheka has liked her very much. And obviously we're trying to sort of up the quality of the broodmare band, uh, always, always trying to bring in new blood and get things that can run so you know that's the next step we hopefully she'll be able to run now she was a beautiful filly and she ticked every single box i mean she's she was born and raised at Kiltynan, our farm in ireland she's never ever put a foot wrong all her life um there was obviously an enormous amount of interest in her it's extremely rare to have a filly um out of a champion two-year-old like that chiefly park winner come up at the sales um and be as attractive as she was. So, although it was obviously a lot more than we thought she would make, um, I wasn't ultimately surprised that she ended up doing what she did in the ring. It was another offering by Frankel, the sales leading sire by aggregate and average price, that commanded the second highest price of the day, when a colt out of the listed place materialistic was knocked down to MV Magna in White Birch Farm for 950,000 guineas. The colt is a granddaughter of prolific producer Pongi from the further family of Chiquita and Magic Wand and was bred and sold by the Kumani's Fittick stud, who have enjoyed over two decades of success from this foundation family. We knew we had a lovely horse um, by the right stallion um, and we hoped, we thought we had the right people on him and, um, and Judmont were underbidders, which was, which was fantastic of them, because you always need an underbidder. And, um, and it ended up with, um, with Coolmore, so we, we couldn't be happier. Either place would have been amazing. Um, and just the most important thing of all is that he goes on to be a good racehorse. We thought he was just incredibly like his sire. Um, and um, he's, he's, a str he's always been a very strong, powerful horse, but actually quite light on his feet. We've always liked him, so it was a good result, really good. Phillies continued to prove popular during the third session and it was Nerlon Bizikoff's Sumbe operation who saw off competition to secure a racy Dark Angel full sister to group two winners Sharon and Wings of War for 850,000 guineas. The filly out of the listed place Fatoon was consigned by Grangemore Stud. I'm absolutely delighted. She's always been a spectacular filly at home and I'm thrilled with the price she made and I'm thrilled with the home that got her. She's been an absolute pleasure. We had to come over to the sales a day early with the storm last week. She's been here nine days and has not put a foot wrong. It's a, it's a lot for a year to take and she's been a class act. There was just something about her. She was pure class. Sustained spending from the sales leading purchasers, Godolphin, continued through to the third and final session, with the team adding a Dubawi filly to their hall for the sale for 800,000 guineas. The daughter of Group 3 winner Luminate was consigned by part owners Newsels Park Stud, who had bought the mare in partnership with Mary Fox Stud's Craig Bennett. It was the first mare we bought in partnership with Newsels. We liked her walk, we liked her. She's group winning two year old, group winning three year old. We've bred her to Galileo and Dubawi twice, and this was the third mate in beautiful filly. We thought she'd fed that sort of money, you know. If you, it, I try and switch it around in my mind. If you're a buyer, what have you got to pay? And for a page like that, with a walk like that, and a filly like that, that's about fair price, I think. I think the buyer's winning, I think we're winning. Well, we thought she was a very nice physical. She's a very nice specimen. She walked very well. We thought of all the Dubawi fillies, she was one of the nicest at the sale. And coming from Newsels, who's a good nursery, we thought, yeah, we all liked her very much, yeah. Whilst the unprecedented figures achieved in 2022 were unlikely to be met in 2023, marketing director Jimmy George gave his reflections on a buoyant week of trade. First and foremost, I think we have to extend sincere thanks to uh, the consigners, the breeders and, and all the purchasers who've um, descended on park paddocks for book one of the Tattersall's October yearling sale. The consigners sent us some outstanding yearlings, some of the best bred turf bred yearlings to be found anywhere in the world by a truly 
outstanding cast of stallions that we have currently standing in Europe. So there was real quality in this catalogue, as you'd expect of Europe's premier yearling sale, which is a, a moniker that uh, one of the October yearling sale proudly holds. And uh, last year's sale was outlandish. I mean, bizarre returns. We added almost 40 million guineas to, to the 2021 total last year. Uh, and uh, we, whilst obviously delighted with, with how book one last year went, uh, were always conscious that that was probably figures that were likely to remain in the record books for a very, very long time. So to match them would have been um, verging on bizarre as well. This year's sale didn't match those figures, but uh, we achieved turnover of very nearly 100 million guineas, an average price of, of just under 250,000 guineas, which is a which is a big number, and a, a median price of 180,000, which is second only to last year's extraordinary sales. So there were plenty of highlights in there and plenty of memorable moments, including six seven-figure yearlings, and the, the, the highlight being the two million guineas Frankel Colt consigned from Haskam and Valiant Stud, uh, one of the great nurseries in Britain, and uh, a tribute to, to the Oppenheimer family who've bred so many good horses, including obviously Cracksman, the sire of this year's Ark winner. So great tribute to them. They're great breeders and they very much deserve that accolade of sale topping consigner. I think the international um, presence has become very much a hallmark of book one of the Tallisall's October yearling sale. And whilst this year's sale didn't match last year's, there were still a significant number of overseas buyers from some of the traditional marketplaces. The Gulf buyers were, were prolific. Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, they were all active and, and made a huge contribution to the sale, but also buyers from Australia, Japan, Hong Kong as well, and a strong contingent from America, and that's become very much part of book one in recent years, with particularly prominent being the Mike Ryan, Chad Brown team, who bought significant numbers for Claravich Stables. So yeah, always an important part of book one, and this year was no exception never underestimate the contribution made by the consigners every year. They place a huge amount of faith in but one of the Tattersall's October yearling sale, for which we're enormously grateful. They really do set the tone with some outstanding yearlings, and that doesn't go unnoticed by the buyers, both domestic and overseas. And obviously the, the domestic buyers are uh, uh, stand to be rewarded with the £25,000 Tattersall's October book one bonuses, which uh, uh, still remain incredibly popular, and we're looking forward to seeing plenty more of those one next year adding to the nearly eight million pounds in bonus prize money that we've already distributed to bonus winners we move fairly swiftly on to book two which begins on Monday obviously the yearlings are already arriving and uh, plenty to look forward to book two of the October yearling sale is a very happy hunting ground for so many buyers not just the domestic British and Irish but obviously overseas buyers as well and uh, it's had a fantastic impact on global racing in recent years with the likes of last year's Derby winner Desert Crown coming from book two the wonderful filly Emily Upjohn who only cost 60,000 guineas a few years ago and and Hong Kong superstar Romantic Warrior was also a book two yearling. So, look, it's a sale with a, with a massive reputation for producing very high-class racehorses. And so we've got an awful lot to look forward to with three days of book two, followed by two days of book three. And then we culminate with book four of the October yearling sale. So, yeah, an awful lot of yearlings to go before we wrap up.